Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Welcome to a very special episode of Tales from a Retro Gamer. This is my 50th episode, and for episode 5-0, I've decided to count down my all-time favorite retro video games. Now, this is going to be a very eclectic list. It's not going to be like most lists you see, because it's based on my personal favorites, games I still go back to again and again. Now, as many of you know, I'm not a huge RPG fan, so this list is going to be have some curious omissions. No Final Fantasy, no Chrono Trigger, no Earthbound. Now, these are great games, I'll, I'll give you that, but RPGs just aren't my games I go to again and again. They're not my favorites. I, like, I prefer more action-oriented games where you get straight to the action, but... Um, Anyway, and a couple other things. There's no sports games on the list. There's a bunch of sports games I love, like Double Dribble and a number of others. Uh, big NBA Jam fan. I'm a big basketball fan in general. But they didn't. none of them quite made the cut. And I had to narrow this list down. It is retro games, so I'm going from the sixth generation and back. So Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Xbox, back. Um, for a long time, I didn't really consider this era retro. But, you know, it's 2020 now, and I suppose these are retro games. Most people seem to consider, you know, the sixth generation and back retro games. So that's what I'm going to go with. Also, I left handheld and computer games off the list because I prefer playing games on the big screen, although there are a bunch of handheld games I do love. And I'm not a big PC gamer and, uh, or just computer games in general. I do collect the old uh, cartridge-based uh, computers, and there's some great games on that. But I really wanted to keep this list. Um, it would get completely out of control if I included, you know, newer games, computer games, handheld games. So what I am including is sixth generation and back and arcade games, you know, as long as they're, you know, older, uh, maybe 90s and back on arcade games. So let's get, without much further ado, let's get started. Now, I did leave, real quick, I did leave... You're gonna, you guys are going to be upset because I left a bunch of great games. I'm upset. It was super difficult boiling this down to 50 games. I stayed up well past midnight last night just giving myself a, literally a headache. What game do I include? What order do I put it in? There's so many great games on this list that aren't on here. Miss Pac-Man, Super Pac-Man, Super Star Wars, Super Metroid, so many super titles. Gunstar Heroes, R-Top, Gradius, Golden Axe. How in the world could I leave these off the list? Well, I only have 50 titles. So without further ado, let's get to it. Number 50, Tempest 2000 for the Atari Jaguar. This is the solo Atari Jaguar game on the list. I love the arcade classic too, but um, Tempest 2000 cranks it up to 2000. It's just a super fun dynamic game, you know, where you go in a circle, shooting inward, it is awesome. And it's super fun, even though it doesn't have the rotary controls from the arcade game. That's a mark of a great game. Uh, just fantastic, super uh, great graphics. I love it. Now, I'm not going to do a deep dive on each game because I'd be here all day. So just going to, just real quick for each game. Now, one thing I'm doing is I'm grouping super similar games in the same series together. Uh, so number 49 is Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2 and Sonic CD. Yeah, I'm cheating a little bit, but I'm going with another number 49 is the basic Sonic the Hedgehog. If you just want to say Sonic the Hedgehog, that's fine. I love these games. Sonic 3, I didn't like quite as much. It was just a little more difficult, but I love the fast action, the excellent graphics, and just the pick up and play gameplay of Sonic the Hedgehog. Awesome games. Number 48, The Legend of Zelda. Now that's really far down on the list. The Legend of Zelda on a lot of people's uh, lists is like in the top three, top five. Sometimes number one is the greatest game of all time. Absolutely love Legend of Zelda, but it is down at number 48 because I do, if, I do prefer more maybe action-oriented or combat-heavy games. And Legend of Zelda does strike a nice balance between exploration, combat, and, uh, you know, storyline. I do love me some Legend of Zelda. So sort of an action RPG did make the list, so don't give me too hard of a time. And I love uh, Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo as well. So number 48 is The Legend of Zelda. Fantastic game. Number 47, Mr. Do's Castle. It is a sequel to... A fantastic game, Mr. Do, but Mr. Do's Castle mixes it up. It's a climbing game, and I absolutely love climbing games. Universal put this game out on the arcades in 1983. It's an excellent game, and the ColecoVision version, I played the heck out of, and just based on how many hours I spent playing it, I had to put Mr. Do's Castle in there, number 47. 
Number 46, Streets of Rage 2. A great side-scrolling combat game, a beat-em-up, if you will. I played, uh, when my son was little, we played the heck out of Streets of Rage 2. And we would play it, and we would play it and play it, and then beat it. A few days later, we would play it again. Excellent game. Uh, Soul Calibur comes in at number 45. I love Soul Calibur. This is my Soul Dreamcast offering on the list. Many of you hardcore Dreamcast fans are going to wonder how in the world could I put only one Dreamcast game on there. But I do love me some Soul Calibur, and it sort of takes the fighting genre... Uh, popularized by Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter 2 and adds weapons and it's super slick and it's awesome and I love the sequel um, for the GameCube. I picked up uh, Soul Calibur 2, the GameCube, because I wanted to play as Link. I need to get it for the Xbox as well because you, uh, you believe you can play as Spawn. I think it's the Xbox version. But anyway, I love me some Soul Calibur on the Dreamcast. And number 44, Crash Bandicoot. Now, the PlayStation is known for, like, early 3D games, sort of early-ish, you know, top 3D games, of sort of popularizing 3D games. But Crash Bandicoot is an excellent 2D series. And it, it's the 16-bit platforms, the Genesis and the Super Nintendo, that's when platforming games, side-scrolling platformers, were super popular at their peak of popularity and excellence. But Crash Bandicoot 1 and 2... Perfectly good side-scrolling combat games on the PlayStation. Love these titles. Great running, great jumping, uh, hopping on enemies. Just fantastic. Number 43, Sunset Riders. Now, this hit. This was originally in the arcades, but I spent most of my time uh, with this game on the Genesis and Super Nintendo. It's sort of like Contra set in the Old West. Just excellent, excellent action. And I do, there's some really cool Western-themed games I like, like Stampede uh, for the 2600 and Intellivision. And um, let's see, Gunfight for the 2600. Really dating myself with some really old Western-themed games, though. But um, Sunset Riders might be my favorite Western game of all time. It certainly is. I think it's the only Western-themed game on this list. Excellent stuff. Number 42, The Incredible Wizard. Now, many of you maybe haven't heard of this game because it's for the Bally Astrocade, which is a system that competed with the Atari 2600, but not very well. It wasn't marketed properly, but it's a great console. And The Incredible Wizard is a really, really great port of Wizard of War, which is a maze shooter. It's a just a terrific two-player uh, maze shooter where you walk through a maze and try to shoot each other and avoid and shoot monsters. Excellent, excellent game. The Incredible Wizard weighing in at number 42. Number 41 is Bump and Jump. This might be the only car driving game on the list. It's a top-down racer where you drive straight up and you, um, not only can you, you know, just race cars, drive around them, you can bump them into obstacles, you know, into the side of the tracks and you can jump, as the name implies, you can jump and hop straight on top of cars. And I love this game because the timing is so important. You can jump over, you know, water obstacles and you can go really fast. And the game warns you when you're coming up on a jump. It's just fantastic. It originally appeared in the arcades, but I played it mostly on the ColecoVision and television and NES. Yes, I played the heck out of it on all three consoles because it's such a great game. Bump and Jump at number 41. Number 40 is Shinobi 3 on the Genesis. Holy cow, this is a great game. Um, I love the, you know, throwing shurikens and the sword play and the running and jumping. It's all executed very well with gorgeous graphics. Plus, you get to ride a jet ski and a horse. It's just, of all these kinds of games, like Ninja Gaiden and these sort of hack and slash 2D games, Shinobi 3 is probably my favorite. That weighs in at number 40. Ask me on a different day, maybe Ninja Gaiden or Ninja Gaiden gets that slot, but this is the 50 list I came with last night. So uh, there's so many great games, so many I left off the list, but there's some really cool ones on the list too. Number 39. Now this is a game, it's really, I've never really known how to pronounce this game. It's for the Genesis, G-A-I-A-R-E-S. This is a, a, a side-scrolling shooter for the Genesis that's sort of like R-Type, Gradius, Thunder Force, those kinds of games with really rich graphics and excellent uh, weapon power-up system. Played this again and again on the Genesis. And I picked up my copy back in the day at um, Funko Land for $2.99. And man, have I gotten just a tremendous worth out of that. Just a great, great game. Number 38 is another shooter. 
blazing lasers. It's for the turbo graphics. It has colorful graphics, awesome power-ups, and the turbo graphics is really known for being, you know, a shooter heavy system. Uh, just excellent shooting games on the turbo graphics and the blazing lasers was an early one. Uh, in this life of the short life of the console, it was an early title for the system. Maybe the best shooter on that system. It certainly um, comes in high on my list at uh, number 38 of my all-time favorite retro games. Number 37, another shooter, but this is a very, very different kind of shooter. This is a target shooting game set with a like circus type atmosphere, more specifically a carnival atmosphere because it is called Carnival. Uh, this was originally a Sega arcade game, but I played most I played it mostly on the ColecoVision, which is just a dead perfect port. You got a little gun uh, back and forth at the top uh, at the bottom of the screen, and you shoot these targets that are going by, and you can get more bullets by shooting targets, and you have to shoot these rotating flags in a timely manner, or you'll the, you, you won't do very well. Just a great target shooting game. Very, very old school. I will give you that, but it's a fantastic game. Number 36 is yet another shooter. This one is for the Genesis. It is a vertical shooter, and it's, it's an early game in the Genesis library, but man, I just go back to it again and again. It's just, it's just flat out fun. It's not quite a bullet hell shooter. It's less frustrating than that. You know, there's not... It, it strikes that per perfect balance between challenging and just an entertaining shooting game. I come back to it again and again, no matter how many times I've played it through. Number 35, the X-Men, the excellent Konami game back from 1992. Now, I spent most of my time in the arcades in the late 70s and early to mid 80s, but in the 90s, when arcade sort of came back with Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat and some of these great uh, four-player uh, combat games like the X-Men and I just absolutely loved playing as Cyclops and it was so cool being in the arcades with my friends just have four of us gathered around a machine and this was from Konami and you might also remember uh, Ninja Turtles and The Simpsons similar you know combat games but I give the X-Men the edge on those uh, three titles because I just loved playing as Cyclops. Number 34 this is a totally different game than any game on the list so far. KC Munchkin for the Odyssey 2. This is a terrific Pac-Man clone for the Odyssey 2. And as a matter of fact, it was so great. At the time, Atari had the rights, the home rights to Pac-Man. And they were able to force it off the market. But plenty of copies were sold. And you can find it pretty easily. But Odyssey, they, Magnavox, they did come out with a sequel uh, to KC Munchkin after this had happened. KC's Crazy Chase. Another great maze game where you, uh, you guide your Pac-Man type character around the maze and you gobble a centipede uh, in Casey's Crazy Chase. That was maybe a shot at Atari because they had the home rights to centipede. Anyway, love me some. If, if you want to play a great maze game that's compulsive that you just play again and again and you like going around eating dots like Pac-Man, play Casey Munchkin or Casey's Crazy Chase. That's number 30, 34. Again, I cheated a little bit by putting both uh, at number 34. Number 33. Okay, there's another car race. I said uh, Bump and Jump. I couldn't remember if it was the only racing game or not, the only car game. I, I did put OutRun 2 for the Xbox. This is Bay, you know, a sequel to the old OutRun game. This is an Xbox exclusive, I believe, if memory serves. But I just love OutRun 2. It's fast. It's fun. It has great rewards as you go. It's extremely rewarding to, to play it. And of all the racing games I have, uh, I spent a ton of time with Rage Racer uh, on the PlayStation, a ton of time uh, on Burnout for, you know, the 360 and GameCube, just the different games in the Burnout series. But I've spent the most time with OutRun 2. Fantastic. Number 32, Castlevania 3. It is my favorite game in the Castlevania series. It's for uh, the NES. Castlevania 3 even edges out Castlevania Symphony of the Night for the PlayStation, in my opinion. It, after Castlevania 1 came out, I absolutely loved it. And then Castlevania 2 disappointed me, as I covered in a recent episode of Tales from Retro Gamer. But Castlevania 3 brought back that great action I love from Castlevania, but amped it up with better graphics and some more, uh, more weapons and things. Number 31. I'm getting old school again on you. Space Invaders 91 for the Genesis and Space Invaders for the Atari 2600. Yes, I'm cheating. I'm putting two games, but just let's call it 
Advanced versions of Space Invaders. Space Invaders 91 plays a lot like the original Space Invaders, you know, with advancing invaders and you're shooting upward at them, but it adds some really interesting weapons, like where you can shoot, you know, several rows at once, and it's got some interesting graphics. A great musical score, very underrated musical score on Space Invaders 91 for the Genesis. And Space Invaders for the Atari 2600, again, similar to the arcade classic, but it adds a bunch of different options. So let's just put Space Invaders 91 at 31, and you can put the Atari Space Invaders in there as well. Uh, so let's look at number 30. Street Fighter II Turbo for the Super Nintendo. One of the greatest arcade ports of all time. Um, I loved playing as e, e Honda and doing the 100 hand slap and my wife and I, uh, we would play this again and again very early in our relationship. Tons of fun. So fun, in fact, we had to stop playing it because it got a little dramatic. We got a little too, it got, matches got a little too heated. Number 29, Kaboom. I love the Atari uh, paddles on the uh, Atari 2600, the paddle controllers, and you guide your bucket of water, of all things, back and forth as a criminal at the top drops bombs and you have to catch them to, you know, uh, extinguish the bombs. So much fun, laser focus attention to move that the bucket so precisely. Just a great action game, uh, great paddle controller game. Number 28, Millipede. This is a fantastic uh, shooting game, trackball game that I like even better than the original Centipede. And I like it better than Slither for the uh, ColecoVision as well, which I played a ton of, of time. It says a lot that I like Millipede even better. You're just zipping all over the screen, you know, at the bottom quarter of the screen at least, and just zapping those um, centipedes. And I love the, or millipedes, I guess, and I love the DDT bombs that they added where you can just, you know, explode, you know, a wide area at once. Love me some Millipede for the arcades. Frogger. Now, Frogger is a really simple game where you just have four-way movement like Pac-Man, but I played, it came out in, uh, in the arcades in 1981, and I loved it then. And more recently, I played a pretty much arcade perfect version on the Genesis. And on my 50th birthday at a free play arcade, I played my brother at Frogger, and it was just like 1981 all again, overall again, except back in 1981, he could beat me. Now I can beat him uh, at the game. Just a fantastic game. Love me some Frogger. Uh, number 26, Baby Pac-Man. Now this is a strange choice because it's an arcade game, it's part pinball and part maze video game. Neither version is great. It's not a great pinball game and it's not a great maze game, but for some reason just going back and forth between the two really works for me. And anytime I go to a, like a free play arcade or a video game convention where you can play this game over and over again, I always do, I love it. Galaga 91 for the Turbo Graphics comes in at number 25. Galaga. The original arcade classics, it, it's such a great game that I actually have one in my game room, and it says a lot that I like Galaga 1, 91 even better. Galaga, I can maybe kind of get a little tired of it sometimes. Maybe that's because I have one or just because I've play, I played it so much in the arcades. But Galaga 91 amps it up with you know a wider variety of enemies, obviously a wider variety of weapons, and it's really colorful. Galaga 91, fantastic. Number 24. Contra for the NES. This is the game I beat before I knew about the Konami code because uh, I, I played it so much. I beat it within just a few games, uh, but within a few days of getting it. It came out in 1988 uh, for the NES, and that's when I got it. And I, I, it's still fun to play today. And it's not as, you know, they came out with uh, Contra 3, the Alien Wars for the Super Nintendo, and that sort of amped up the graphics and the, the sound effects and everything. But a nostalgic favorite is still the original Contra. Number 23, God of War. Now, I'm a big time retro gamer, but I do love, uh, my favorite modern style game is the third person 3D hack and slash. I absolutely love those. Some of my favorite games of all time are where you're just this muscle bound hero or anti-hero in, in these strange, graphically impressive worlds, and you're just going around wreaking havoc, just you know, hacking and slashing and killing and slaying and all this stuff. So much fun. And God of War is a pinnacle example of that. And I love God of War 2 as well. I didn't play God of War 3. If I recall, that was on the PlayStation 3. And so I, did, I didn't, I never played that one. 22, another sort of modernish game from a third person perspective, Resident Evil 4 for the GameCube. Holy cow. 
Resident Evil is a great game, and I love those games. I remember playing a lot of Resident Evil 2 on the Nintendo 64, but Resident Evil 4 sort of got rid of those old tank-style controls and brought the action more intense, and man, for a GameCube game, it is just absolutely gorgeous. I've, I've beaten uh, Resident Evil 4, and I've gone, to, gone, gone back to it again. It's a great game. Number 21. Asteroids Deluxe. Now it came out in 1981 by Atari, and by that time, see, I had mastered the original Asteroids, which came out in 1979, just beating it to death. I could play it for hours at a time on one quarter, but Asteroids Deluxe came along in 1981 and made it more, uh, it was a more difficult game. Um, there's a cluster of ships that breaks apart and chases you at times, and you know, it comes towards your ship, making it a more difficult game. And there's some cheats on asteroids you can use where you fly up the center of the screen and just take out the small asteroids. Much harder on Asteroids Deluxe. So it took one of my favorite games of all time, Asteroids, and made it even better. Number 20, Donkey Kong 3. Now this is a choice that may puzzle you, but it's a controversial choice, not on purpose by me. I just love it, and I know a lot of people hate it because Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. are much beloved uh, non-scrolling platforming games or climbing games, if you will, and Donkey Kong 3 changed it s to sort of a Galaga-style shooter, but with little platforms at the bottom, and Stanley the Bugman basically is your character instead of Mario, as you might think he would be. So this game, you know, alienated a lot of people that loved the earlier Donkey Kongs, but I loved it. I just love it as a shooter, and it's a great in the arcades, and I played it there, but on the NES, there's a terrific port, and I go back to that game again and again and again just to try to beat my high score. I think it's a fantastic shooter. Another surprise perhaps on this list is Popeye. It's that great classic Nintendo arcade game. Um, it's, a, it's another climbing game or non-scrolling platformer. And you just walk or you climb and you walk around um, trying to catch hearts and letters and things that, and musical notes that um, olive oil at the top of the screen is dropping down and you um, avoid Bluto or Brutus, whatever you want to call him, Popeye's arch nemesis. And it sounds simple, it sounds maybe a little goofy and pointless, but it is so much fun. And I return to it again and again. I love it. I still try to beat my high score to this day. And I played it a lot on the ColecoVision and in the arcades, but I spent the most of the time on my NES. So it's a fairly NES heavy list here, just because I've played these games so many times. Number 18 is the awesome arcade classic Robotron 2084. Brilliant game, double joystick control, where you're just running for your life the whole time, shooting in all directions, running in all directions. I never get tired of this game in the arcades or on the Atari 5200, where you could use double joysticks, and it's just a fan, just brilliant shooter, hectic shooter, and it's difficult, and I'm actually kind of decent on it. Some of these really, really hard shooters I have a hard time, uh, you know, getting very far in them. But Robotron, I can I play pretty well, and perhaps that factors into it. Tetris comes in at number 17. This is a number one, another game that comes in a lot of people's, you know, top 10 or top five favorite games of all, of all time. I put it at number 17, and I spent most of my time playing it on the NES. Um, after I had uh, sold my share of the comic book stores I owned with my brother-in-law back in the early 90s, I took a, some time off. I took three months off just to figure out what I was going to do with my life and just to have some time off after being you know, very busy for many years. And I spent a lot of that time playing Tetris on the NES, and I, I had to quit because I got so into this game. But it's just a great, the greatest action puzzle of all time is Tetris. Number 16 is Minor 2049er for the ColecoVision. Back in the day, it was $50 compared to most of the rest of the ColecoVision games, which were $30. Well worth it to me. That tells you a lot right there. And again, it's just one of these climbing, non-scrolling games where you climb ladders, you slide down chutes, you ride elevators, and you're trying to cover, you know, walk over all the um, platform space, all the floors to fill them in. And it's just, it has maze elements, climbing game elements, and it's just provided me endless hours of fun over many years. I play. I like the ColecoVision best version best because it does have 11 screens as opposed to 10 on some of the like the, for the 5200 version and I believe the computer versions as well. Minor 2049er, incredible. Number 15, River Raid. 
excellent vertical scrolling shooter, the first and still one of the best games of its type in the genre. You fly over up the River of No Return, I believe it was called, and it's an excellent combination of shooting and having to refuel. So much fun, I played that just endlessly on the uh, 2600 and ColecoVision. Number 14 is Donkey Kong Country, one of the best looking and most finely tuned side-scrolling platformers of all time. A great Super Nintendo game that I played a ton with my wife back in the day. Number 13, Mega Bomberman. Of all the Bomberman games that were produced, including Saturn Bomberman, which I believe held was for 10 players, my favorite to this day is Mega Bomberman for the Sega Genesis. Every time my uh, nephew comes home from Japan, we play it with, my, uh, with him and my son and my daughter, and we just have a blast. I love have, hopping on those kangaroo-type creatures, and that, that really adds an interesting wrinkle uh, to the formula where you're, you know, from a top-down perspective, you're walking around bombing, uh, apparently, your kids and your nephew. Just a fantastic game. Number 12, Scramble. Uh, this is a horizontal shooter, uh, very vintage, early 80s, I believe, 80, 81. Uh, I love this game. It's a real colorful horizontal shooter. The bright colors sort of belie the fact that it is a hardcore, challenging game. You st shoot straight forward and you drop bombs and you bomb fuel tanks to get more fuel. And that's a super important part of the game. Just a great mix of shooting and having to refuel. Just a really one of the early uh, horizontal shooters, but still one of the best in my opinion. Number 11, Pepper 2. And if you're not a big ColecoVision fan, you might be thinking, Pepper what? There was no Pepper 1, but there was a Pepper 2 in the arcades, and the ColecoVision version is the one I spent the most time with. Just a great game where you're sort of, it's kind of a cross between Pac-Man and Amidar, where you're going around, you know, zipping up sections and kicks. It's got some kicks elements too, because you're, you know, closing off parts of the screen to complete levels. But you can go from maze to maze uh, without completing one, which was a really neat feature. And I love the maze genre, and Pepper 2 is definitely a great version of that. It has the Alfred Hitchcock thing. So great music on the ColecoVision with this game. Number 10. Now we're getting down to the, my top 10 favorite retro games of all time. Maximo Ghost to Glory for the PlayStation 2. I mentioned earlier that I loved 3D third-person hack-and-slash games. Go, uh, Maximo Ghost to Glory, which is sort of a like a spiritual successor to the Ghosts and Goblins games. Uh, it's just a hardcore, brutal hack and slash game. It's people say it's very difficult, and it is. It is challenging, but I have beaten this game three times without using cheats, which is just crazy. There's one annoying aspect of the game where you uh, save your progress by collecting coins, uh, so that was kind of annoying. But still, it's a fantastic game, and it had a sequel, Maximo versus Army of Zen, for the PlayStation 2 as well that I loved. I wish they would bl bring this franchise back. If they told me that we're going to come out with the next Maximo game on PlayStation 5 coming up, I would be sure to get a PlayStation 5. Number nine, Tron, the amazing game from 1982 with four different scre screens based on one of my favorite video game movies of all time, the Disney classic Tron. And, you know, what can you, the light cycles, the, uh, Tron is just fantastic. If you've never played Tron, the real way in the arcades, with the uh, you know the trigger, the joystick, you, you've got to play Tron. I'm not going to say to consider yourself a true gamer because that's a ridiculous statement, but hunt out Tron in the arcades. It's a fantastic game. Great mix of maze and shooter, and you know there's different genres within the game. Four different screens. Love me some Tron. Number eight, Beauty and the Beast for the Intellivision. Another sort of esoteric choice. It has nothing to do with the Fable or the Disney film Beauty and the Beast. It's sort of a King Kong game, and it's the mo to me it's the most dynamic, most arcade-like game possible on the Intellivision. It works perfectly with that kind of odd disc controller that the Intellivision use, but you're climbing a building and you're trying to get to, to the top. Uh, Buford is holding your, your kind of ugly girlfriend, Mabel, and you just keep trying to go to the top, kind of like Donkey Kong. You keep going up and up and up, and then you do it again. But um, it doesn't have like four completely different screens like Donkey Kong, but somehow it never gets old. And I love, you know, when there's hearts that you grab and that makes you invincible, and the timing of that is just excellent. Love Beauty and the Beast for the Intellivision. Again, nothing to do with the Disney property. Number seven, Warlords. Probably the greatest four-player game of all time. Maybe the greatest party game of all time. 
it sort of took the Pong and Breakout theme and expanded it, where you're protecting, you know, your castle, and, you know, there's four players, four castles, and you're protecting it with a ball bouncing around, and you're trying to bat it away from your castle and affect others. Just a great game. Amazing in the arcades, and on the Atari 2600, since there, you could have four paddle controllers on the 2600, just the perfect arcade port for the 2600. Number six, we are really getting, getting down to it, Dig Dug. Now, I love the May genre. This was a game that came out in 1982. Fantastic arcade game. And since I, I love maze games, and Dig Dug let you dig your own mazes. And it was super satisfying to, um, you would, you know, shoot uh, your enemies and you would blow them up with a pump. Pump them up and poof, that explode. That is so much fun. Number five, we are really getting down to it. Now, I cheated a little bit here because I left a title out. Number five, I had Super Mario Brothers because it's just, it is still just the ultimate example of a side scrolling platformer game. It was really the first of its type. And I would put Super Mario Brothers 3 even better. So maybe at number five, you have Super Mario Brothers for nostalgia and simplicity as far as this type of game go. When it came out, it was it was considered, you know, almost open world because there were so many secrets and surprises. But, but today, it's a simple platforming game that is still fun to pick up and play. Super Mario Brothers 3 expanded on it. Uh, the same type of gameplay, but even better graphics and a bigger game. And Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. So you can just bundle up all those together as game number five. But here's where I cheated. I have 5A as Mario Brothers. That's the original Mario Brothers that came out before Super Mario Brothers. This is the non-scrolling game where you, you, you've got to play this as two players because you're trying to, you know, you're, you're, there's Mario and there's Luigi, the other player, and you're trying to sabotage each other by knocking enemies on each other. And it's just a great game. Love me some Mario Brothers and Super Mario Brothers. Sorry about that big jumble at number five. <laughs> number four. Phoenix, we're getting back to vintage old school shooters. You guide your ship at the bottom of the screen and you're shooting. It's kind of like Demon Attack, which copied Phoenix. And there's these birds and there's several different types of birds that you shoot down. And then there's a big mothership that you shoot down. One of the early bosses in video game history. Love me some Phoenix. And there's a decent port on the Atari 2600, but it's not hard enough. So I'm definitely going to stick with the arcade version here. Love Phoenix. Number three. Ladybug. We're getting back to another maze game. Now, this was originally an arcade game, but I played it the most on the ColecoVision, and it's sort of like Pac-Man, where you know you go around a maze, um, eating dots, and it have elements of lock and chase because you open and close doors. But they're sort of turnstile doors, so that's different than lock and chase. But on the ColecoVision, man, I tried again and again to beat the high score, the high score in Electronic Games magazine. The, uh, the, great, the first and greatest uh, video game magazine. And I actually beat the score in there, I think with, by scoring 400 and something thousand, and I was really excited. And I took a Polaroid picture of the TV screen and sent it in. But by the time the next issue came in, someone had even beaten my score. So I never got my um, score in the magazine, but uh, it's still Ladybug. People say, oh, it's just a Pac-Man clone and write it off but it is so much fun. The enemies get super fast and you have to time, and it's got pinball top scoring multipliers. You've got to play it uh, to really fully appreciate it. It is a great game, Ladybug. Number two is maybe a surprise choice, Time Pilot. Konami released this in 1982. There's a lot of Konami, Konami, I never can say that word right, games on this list because it's such a fantastic company, but they created to me what is the perfect shooter in Time Pilot. Now you're fixed to the center of the screen and you can twirl about shooting in all directions, but the scrolling goes in all directions as well. And it's just a super dynamic game where you move through eras of time and um, all the, there's different kinds of enemies and you're just barely, you know, you're doing 360s to shoot and you're, you know, shooting volleys of bullets at all these enemies that are coming at you, swooping in in all directions and you're picking up parachutes to get bonus points and it's just a great game. And my son and I have had a great time playing this on the PlayStation, on one of those uh, Konami uh, compilation discs, because it works great uh, with the DualShock joysticks. Fantastic game. Time Pilot at number two. Now, many of you may know number one already, because I've spoken about it many times. Mr. Do for the arcade and the Super Nintendo. 
Mr. Do, like Dig Dug, they were both in the uh, production process at the same time. So it's a lot of people just consider Mr. Do sort of a copycat of, of Dig Dug, but they were both being, you know, worked on at the same time. But but like Dig Dug, Mr. Do, you dig, you dig tunnels. So it's a maze game, but you make your own pathway. So every game is different, and it's, and you shoot a ball at at enemies that are uh, coming after you. You can spell out extra. You can eat all the cherries. There are several different ways to complete the board. You know, if you get all the enemies or eat all the cherries or spell out extra. And there's so many strategies in this game. And my sole writing credit in Game Informer magazine was in their old feature they used to have called, I believe it was the greatest game of all time. And I submitted Mr. Do and they published it. And I was really excited about that. So there you go, Mr. Do at number one on the list. Now this has been a crazy, you might think, a very eclectic list, but I've played games from all eras and virtually all you know, platforms, and I've played a wide variety of games uh, of different genres, but I do have, I obviously have certain genres that are my favorites, mazes, shooting games, climbing games, platformers, and this weighed very, very heavily on my list, so I'm sure you're gonna disagree with many of my choices, and you might even want to punch me in the face for not putting some of these just amazing RPGs from the Super Nintendo. And, you know, where's Fantasy Star from, uh, you know, Master System? Where's the Fantasy Star sequels from the Genesis? It's on and on and on. So do me a favor in the comments. And I appreciate you hanging on this long. This has been a long video, but I wanted to really celebrate my 50th uh, Tales from Retro Gamer of all time. But put in the comments. What games did I leave out that you definitely would have put in there? Maybe put your favorite. Put your number one game that I definitely left off the list. Put it there. I appreciate it very much. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. And thank you for bearing with me through this crazy long video with a lot of games that many of you probably wouldn't have picked. But I love me some video games from all eras, and it's been a lot of fun boiling it down to 50, even though it was a painful process. We will talk to you guys later, and I'll see you at episode 51.